So Ruby on Rails bundles form helpers with all its forms that generates when you actually create maybe a scaffold or something when, you, when you're working in an app. Um, all of your views, there's typically a form partial that at least on the model level, if you're submitting data to a database, you need a form to um, accept this object and its parameters and you know let it pass through to the database. And then there's this whole flow of how that works with Rails with the MVC pattern, if you're familiar with it. But at its core, the view layer has these special helpers for pretty much all input types on a form that you can use and customize. So but out of the box, they come with some same defaults that allow you to pass custom names to things, classes to things. Um, basically, it generates the HTML for you, but it uses Ruby as the, f the front matter to do so. But there might come a time where you want to customize how that works. And I've been finding, as I use Tailwind more in my apps, um, I'm constantly adding classes to things and constantly um, redoing the same stuff over and over. And I, maybe there could be a solution to that um, going forward. I haven't actually built this out yet, but I'm thinking of making a little mini form builder gem or, or tool to allow you to kind of have some same defaults for Tailwind um, within Ruby on Rails by default. So when you generate maybe a new scaffold or view that has a form partial, it's just going to have these text fields with already some classes on it that just make it look okay. Um, I don't know if I'll do that or not, but it might help me for a few fields anyway, like text fields, basic text areas, select fields and whatnot. So this video is kind of just a guide to use what's known as form builder in a Rails app, which inherits from an action view helpers component or class, I should say. Um, and you can pass your own custom form builder and then pass that to your their forms in particular. And you can also set this at an application wide level so you don't have to add it to every form you have, but it's one thing that you might want to add just off offhand like this, basically when you're adding a, f a form to an app. I have created an app. I'll just want to run through it real quick. I've got my kickoff tailwind template in this tab. Nothing's even generated yet. I just basically did a new new app and called it uh, some demo of this concept. So what I'll do is create a first like a resource. So uh, Rails generate just a basic post. Um, we'll say scaffold. Save us some time. Post. I'll just give it a title. It will be a string and a text or content maybe will be uh, text. We'll generate that. It's going to create quite a few files. Many we don't need, of course. But for example purposes, this should be fine. Um, but the key thing here is just, of course, the views. It's going to have this form input that you're probably used to if you've worked with Rails before. So Rails DB migrate. We need to run this migration since we're creating a table in a database called posts. And it should just have done that. Great. I'll open this up in VS Code. And what I want to point out primarily is adding this to your app can pretty much happen within the app directory anywhere. So you can call it whatever you want. Anything in here gets auto loaded when you add extra stuff. So you might have like service objects or something in here to, to do more with your classes outside of the model scope. Um, so just to denote that it gets auto loaded, but to add this to our app, what I want to do is first just check out the post form and show you the base. So we got our basic text field here and the label itself. So those come stock. Those are just form helpers that come with Rails by default. And you can dig into the source code and see how these are generated. They're essentially just wrappers for HTML content that allow you to pass even more to it. So options in particular, you can pass pretty much anything related to HTML down the pipe here. Uh, and it should render fine. But the key thing here is what I want to do is create my own um, builder. So when I generate this field, or I can I can kind of construct my own text field behind the scenes that essentially with Tailwind, since I have on this template anyway, I have forms with basic class inputs. Tailwind ships, I should say, Tailwind ships with its own typography package. So you can actually include that here and use it. Um, I need to actually update my template to do that probably, but I, before that was a thing, which is it's like pretty much brand new. Um, I had to kind of roll my own styles for those inputs and just the way they looked and, and, and reacted to the way I preferred anyway. So you can do, you can kind of mix and match those things or just use what Tailwind comes with. 
um, you need to actually extend that as a plugin here. There's, it's all in the documentation on Tailwind, but that's not the point of this. So what I want to do is create a custom builder for a form here. And what we could do is maybe just call it builder and um, maybe a Tailwind builder, something like that. You can have like bootstrap, whatever you use in here, just some arbitrary name that you're going to use throughout. And then what I'll add in my app directory is maybe just a f either a form folder or f builders. Um, it's I think builders might be a good name to use since it's kind of a generic thing. Um, but we want to mock our naming convention here. So we'll say tailwind builder, the RB. And from here, we're going to start inheriting from some base defaults in the app. Uh, already. So we've got our tailwind builder class that we just passed to that form and it's going to inherit from action view and then helpers and then form builder. So this is the, the core rails form builder class that's already in the framework. So we've got our base text field already here, but I want to override that. And the way to do that pretty simply is to go and just pass the same method in this class. And then you can call super, which essentially inherits from the, the parent class So this here. It's going to basically take the current text field and just change a little bit about it. So we're just inheriting that construct. And if you look at the source again, all these um, options are going to come down the pipe by default. So that's where I'm getting these um, right here. So attribute will be basically what you are passing to the text field. And then options will be pretty much any HTML options or whatever under the sun. Um, so options, I'm actually going to merge. Um, if you recall in my class names in my style sheets, I'm going to merge the class called input that has some defaults for my Tailwind CSS stuff. So I'll say options, I'll just do a reverse merge in Ruby, and we can just pass class into that and pass input. So this is just, all I wanted to do is just have this out of the box. So when I new up an app, all I have to either do is add this as a builder on the form, or I believe there's a config configuration on the global space of the application there. So on your config, you could go down and um, pass this as the builder. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that's called. I should have looked that up before I did this video, but I know it's an option you can do. Um, so it uses like this builder by default, even though it inherits from the, the parent one. So you can pass as many methods as you want in this file um, that customize and or override current settings. You can even go fancy here and like add the label attribute and make it just one line. So we could have like a div um, with the label and then the text field that gets kind of busy to me. So I kind of want to make it extended, but not too hard handed, I guess you could say. Um, it's up to you. If your app, you find yourself repeating yourself over and over and over, this might be a good option though. Um, and I'll get to how you could do something with like generating HTML in a second in this file. But maybe you want to do the same for text area. So I'll do the same. So there's a helper called text area. Well, just like the text field, it's just got an attribute, if I can spell, and then options you can pass through. It's essentially saying there's a default options that's a hash you can pass through of different things. And then we'll call super again and do the same with attribute options, reverse merge. class input you could pass like placeholder here too if you wanted to like some text i don't know whatever you want to if i all right so for a select you could do the same thing i'm just going to do a few fields here just for demonstration so select's going to have a little bit more under as just options to pass through we can pass the object name Method name, template object, and options. 
there's more to a select field so there's more options to pass of course so we'll call super again pass the object name down method name template object and options dot reverse merge and I'll do I have another class called select for this one so that's essentially the extent I went to want to kind of customize this just to basically pass a class to those by default instead of the, the normal defaults they only have an ID they don't have a class um, attribute which is kind of annoying yes I could add that right here and be done but if I'm scaffolding or creating stuff fast um, I kind of want it done for me you know so it's, it's kind of a opinionated approach but it's up to you if you want to do something this ex to this extent now if you were wanted wanting to generate HTML in this file you will need to include a few other classes so um, the ones probably you'll need are action view helpers and tag helper that lets you create like content tag uh, maybe a label or something like that and then the other would be you might need this context just for adding that in as well so here you could maybe wrap uh, around the super element you could have a content tag of a div and maybe it has a class of like margin bottom five whatever and then you can make it wrap super class and then maybe you override the setting so you can pass the label through whatever you want to do there but these allow that stuff to happen otherwise this stuff won't work because content tag is part of that class so I'm gonna leave those out for now I'll comment these out because we don't need them in this particular case and we can just go up and reboot the server and see if I made any mistakes so on if I go and comment if we go to the actual rails new or posts new it's gonna have the default oops I need to oh right here okay so these already have that class you know because I've got the tailwind stuff specifically in um, if we were to remove if you can see now uh, that isn't a default that comes from our, our form builder if I go back into that file and remove this builder and you could go back through and then nothing's renders so we've still got just our basic defaults which are pretty ugly in this case so passing the builder option lets you do something like that. Now you can even go as far as creating a brand new tag, um, kind of like the doc suggests. So maybe we can borrow that just for the hell of it. And, and in this context, we've got access to this instance variable template and also object name. So that's kind of neat. It goes pass, pass down from this stuff. Um, and allows you to use that from the parent classes. So then in this case, I can render that out. I don't know what I'd use this for. Let's see if we can get it to work though. What's it expect? So a method value, I don't know, test, test. This might not work. So we've got a radio button. Um, I need to make sure it's got some sort of value though. So under the hood anyway, it's got the radio that was coming back, but we passed test to that, which is, I guess that it's assuming that's the object. So maybe we can do um, title and it'll do something like that. And this obviously isn't a good use case, but you get those things back it's got the div around it because we've passed the content tag down and we're able to use content tag in this case because it's inheriting from the template um, instance but you could do the same in this case like here if you wanted to get just get rid of that template instance I believe it should still work or not radio button
Okay, maybe we need that inherited. Either way though, um, those options ex exist. So this allows you to kind of generate that stuff in a custom way. So maybe you have a ton of classes in a Tailwind component or something like that you wanna to add to your app and make it just work. Um, this is some, uh, at least another way to do something like that in a more reusable fashion. So I figured I'd share that and just give you an idea of how it looks and how it could work for you. Um, if you were to want to see the source for this stuff, I'd recommend going to this class, form helper, and then the tags, and then you can go through each of these in the source. So this is the API Ruby on rails.org. But if you wanted to go to say the text area, um, and go on GitHub, you can go see the actual blob of this. That's the actual rendering rendering of it. So, um, Here's the content tag, you can pass in the options and then do just kind of see what the defaults are. It allows you to go, kind of know what you're going to pass in here when you're making these. So there's not a great documentation on how to do this. Um, I think it's just more or less going through the source, seeing how that's generated and then just modifying it to make um, use of the parent, but still, you know, make it work in your context. So. Hope that was useful. I'll share this source code. It's not much, but it's something that you could maybe refer to and see how it works under the hood. If you wanted to pass in your own classes or whatever, you could do the same. Uh, so uh, that's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.